Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Pokemon Platinum. Last time, we explored the mines of Iron Island and met a fellow trainer named Riley who helped us stop Team Galactic from taking over the island. For our troubles, he gave us an egg. You know how this works? It'll travel with us until it hatches and then we'll talk about it. It's the huge. It's happened, what, like three times at this point? Yeah. Not only that, but Supernova ascended to the stage of Clefable. I'm so happy about this, because we've had Supernova as a Cleffa all the way back before we even had two badges, and seeing it all the way evolve now just feels so good. I know we've only had a Moonstone for like two videos, so it wasn't really waiting that much longer from when it could have evolved unless I went and dug in the underground for one, but I'm still very happy with it. This time, we are going to be challenging the Canalave City Gym, and it's to be Supernova's debut battle. But before we get started, we have yet another reason to be proud of Supernova. Remember that NPC to the south of Sand Gym Town from a few videos back? He asks for a specific level of Pokemon and asks for you to show him that, and the level changes each day? On every day of real time since we have met that guy, I have gone in to check in on him and see what level of Pokemon he wanted to see. Today, he wanted to see a Pokemon that was level 43! All that training, that usage of the experience share on Clefairy, it all became worth it. For that, he gives us a black belt, which is actually, in my opinion, the worst item he can give you. Alternatively, he can give you the focus band, which lets you hang on with one HP from a would-be lethal attack. It's random chance. And then the focus sash, which is a consumable item, so definitely don't want to use that in single player if you want to really hang on to that. Um, it makes it so that if an attack would have knocked you out full health to zero, you will hang on with one HP if it was a single blow. Can be a really helpful item in multiplayer. Makes a lot of Pokemon useful when they wouldn't otherwise be and makes switching in a lot more viable. All that said though, let's go on in to Canalave Gym. Unlike most recent gyms, this did not get a facelift from Diamond and Pearl at all. It's the exact same layout and everything, but that's not such a bad thing. Don't mess with success when it's a good gym puzzle. This is not Acrobat's gym. Acrobat has been invaluable in us winning at other gyms. It's not going to so much be here. Steel represents an unbending spirit. If one refuses to accept defeat, the path to victory reveals itself. You're a black belt, buddy. Isn't one of the things you do, like, bend steel beams with your forehead or something? Maybe your headband actually is one right now. So the type for Canalave City Gym is steel type, arguably? Okay, maybe not arguably, but out of all the people that I've personally known, several of them seem to have remembered that Canalave City Gym's type is ground and not steel. We are fighting a part ground type right now, and you do fight a fair number of Steelix in here. But maybe it's the theme of mining that makes some people think that it's ground type, but no, it's steel. It's definitely steel, no arguing that. We're definitely going to need to rely on Bodhi and Supernova a lot to be winning here. Acrobat... Wing attack's gonna not do much damage at all. Enemies have really high defense near, so physical attackers aren't gonna be as helpful. There's the fact that Steel is outright immune to poison and is just a really good defensive type. We don't really have a lot of options. Bodhi's Earthquake and Supernova's Fire Blast are our main ways of dealing with this. Um, wow. So we have these elevators here. Some of them lead to dead ends. I am very happy I didn't pick option number two. That would have been really pathetic. You're wanting to go up and down between these layers just to see what you can see from below and try to figure out what the right way to go is. As you see, I've made it off into another little nook around here. And this is the required pathway. An ace has the knowledge and experience of battling at high levels. I'll demonstrate what that means to a noob like you! Buddy, I don't think ace trainers and professionals use terms like noob. Just saying. <laughs> Get a scissor. I chose very poorly having Bodhi in the lead. Uh... Yeah, this is a good time for Supernova's debut battle. We'll just switch out, no problem at all. Scissor is really slow, so it'll get a hit on me right here, but unless it's got bullet punch or something, it's not gonna outspeed me after this. I'm higher leveled anyway. X scissor there. Ooh, that was a critical hit. Fire Blast! Supernova. Can we, can we talk? Like, really, can we talk? Your luck. Like, I thought stars were supposed to be lucky. People wish on them, and just, why? I know that Fire Blast is 85% accuracy, and that it's not the most high accuracy move in the world, but it is a move that you at least see in competitive play a little bit, because its accuracy versus power can be worth that added risk. It kind of shares this with Hydro Pump, but you see that every once in a while. So, just... Okay, 
Okay. This game really doesn't like giving me good debut battles for my Pokemon, even when they end up being really valuable members of the team. I want to switch my Moomoo Milk up here. I'm needing to use healing items a little bit more lately, so we'll uh, get that up there just so I can heal conveniently. I'll keep Bodhi in the lead. I don't want to use Supernova a ton here just because she is four levels higher than Bodhi and six levels higher than the rest of the team. For a second, I thought this was a dead end and didn't notice the lift that moves me to the side that was on my left. Yeah, so we have these as well. and It's, it's kind of neat how you have this whole thing that is full of dead ends now. It's cool how you can see that far below you and just through the holes in the ground. It's something that wasn't possible on the Game Boy Advance and really just adds a lot to the 3D perspective they got going here. Pokemon and people have worked together for years. Let us show you an example of that history. Well, only if you let me show you an example of that history, considering that um, it's a little known fact that I fight using Pokemon as well. You Maybe you knew that already because you did challenge me to a battle, but just in case you didn't, I'm spelling it out for you. Very happy that I chose to keep Bodhi in the lead, considering he's got Magnemite. Uh, even though Earthquake's a physical attack, I have no... Yeah, there was no chance that Magnemite was going to survive times six damage from that, especially not with Torterra's attack stat as big as it is. Another Magnemite, no problem. What is it this guy does for a job with two Magnemites? Maybe I don't want to know that, but... Yeah, that's really strange. Um, Cantilever City Gym is meant to be like a, uh, I guess maybe like a refinery of sorts. I know that the trainers in here are all implied to be workers that go to Iron Island and work in the mines all day. And that's kind of like how Cantilever City makes its money and whatnot. But just, I don't know what you would do with two Magnemites in that. Maybe they know Flash or something, but it's not even dark in there. It was clearly well lit. Buddy, I think you might just be a, um, somebody from the uh, Kanto branch who transferred here without realizing that Flash is not an issue unless you're... Mining in what, like, Wayward Cave, yeah. Aya! We have co we are coming out swinging with he super heavy judo chops. He was so excited that he couldn't say that properly. I'm blaming it all on him, even though his text was perfectly written. Black Belt David Steelix. Once again, we have more ground types right here. Granted, I think that means that we have seen just as many electric steel types, so maybe it's more in Diamond and Pearl that I'm thinking of that, but. Point is, I have met a lot of people that did that, and there's a lot more required trainer battles in Candlelight City Gym than I remember there being. I mean, it's not, like, a ton, but hey, Screech. That was a very poor usage of time, I'll say that much. You really have no chance of surviving this attack. I'll just do Mega Drain so I don't use up another Earthquake PP. Not like it really matters with all the Lepa Berries I got, but hey. One less trip to the inventory is just a video that is that much smoother. Not like people really seem to mind all that much when I have to. Steelix, again. Bodhi can't one-shot that. Scythe does have Vacuum Wave. Let's, uh, let's switch over to Supernova. It's just that I know that Scythe has a type advantage with Vacuum Wave. I just don't have that much confidence that a 40 power special move coming off of a Gallade is going to be one-shotting these. It's really only meant for those situations when I just barely don't one-shot something. Sandstorm. Pfft. What is it with the AI trainers and not reading that I have Magic Guard? I'm not complaining though, but it just kind of seems like, dude, that is an 85 accurate move, and I have missed three times out of four with it. Four, four times out of five. Are you? <sighs> I thought you burned up all your bad luck with that roar of time, but I guess not. Maybe your luck was just building all of that time and. You burned it all up in one fell swoop. Bodhi, I'm gonna need to take care of this. Man, with Supernova's luck the way it's been, I'm starting to wonder if maybe I made a poor choice with Meteor Mash. Normally 85% accuracy is fairly reliable, but when I'm missing that much, four times out of five. Bodhi, I need you to level up, I really do. And not because you're too weak or anything, because I need you to be able to one-shot these Steelix when Supernova's just gonna miss them all the time. Besides, they're like what, like 30 feet long? How do you... These Steelixes are not very bright. They have had how many free turns to attack my team and have done no damage to me, considering I'm using a ground type and a magic guard Pokemon. Please go down, buddy. Not like I'm worried about it. That just sounded kind of weird now that I actually stopped listening to it. 777 experience! Please let that be an omen. That was a complete... Wait. He said complete trashing! I thought he said complete thrashing because he's like a black belt, but no, he said complete trashing. 
I don't know if that was an intentional pun or whatever though, but I very much approve. More required battles. Supernova, you are... No, no, no. I got 25 Lepa Berries. I have them for situations such as this. Getting all those Lepa Berries allows me to have low PP moves. So we'll use it and we'll see how we do in this fight. By focusing only on one type, you can really see the strengths and weaknesses of that Pokemon. Ah, so that's the trainer's excuse for having just one type of Pokemon on the team and doing a shoddy job covering their weaknesses. Or I can just be completely wrong and you can be a Bronzor trainer that is annoying to fight pretty much no matter what team you have. Yep, you have Levitate and not Heatproof. Was hopeful that it had Heatproof, but of course not. That's the case, then I am suddenly very happy that I used that Lepa Berry after I fought myself on it for a few seconds. Go on, Supernova. Make it wish that it had Heatproof for its ability. Probably honestly would take less damage from a Earthquake than it would from a Fire Blast, so yeah. yeah assuming that it had neither ability, I don't know what I'm talking about. Come on! Like, I'm not crazy. This is 85% accuracy, isn't it? I kind of want to check it now. Because there's no way my luck can be that bad. No, it is. It's 85. I don't think I've ever seen it burn on this playthrough, but that's like a 10% chance. Thank you. I'll make a note to myself. If I ever end up playing competitive, I am never going for those 85 accurate 120 power moves. Ever. <laughs> really. Just, wow. Get our experience. Who is next? Another Bronzor, <laughs> whoopee. Please don't have heat proof. Really, please don't have heat proof. I'm just begging, like, maybe her text is right. Or maybe she's not actually like accurate to her text. It would be a pretty smart move to just be an A, if you were putting an AI trainer into the game to give them a bunch of Bronzors and just alternate between heat proof and levitate to make them unpredictable. Cause I love that about Bronzor, just the fact that you can choose which weakness it has, but either way it only has one. It's a really neat idea. Another Bronzor. Level 38 this time. Should be thankful that it's not an evolved Bronzor. Okay, I, I could take three Fire Blasts hitting in a row. That's good, that's good. That's how it should be. <laughs> Down goes that. There's my very slow animation of my Shell Bell. I just felt the need to uh, chomp down on it. It's always bugged me how that's the item using animation. My focus was too narrow-minded. Don't you mean it was too narrow-minded? Because you're still t No, that's not even clever. Becoming friendly with your Pokemon? I mean, really friendly. If you do that, you'll naturally learn how you should battle with it. I'll take your word for it. My Pokemon already have max happiness. Perhaps that is why you lost. We have this red platform. And we go all the way with it. That sounds really disturbing, actually. So the gym leader, Byron, we have heard about him before, and before we go into battle with him, I want to draw attention to the episode of the anime that he is in. I don't know if they were intending for this, but Byron just seems to be like that crazy old guy that's just been down in the mines his whole life and has been driven kind of batty by it, because you look at him and you assume that he's like this super serious, gruff guy who's just like, I am Byron, but no. His portrayal in the anime is amazing. If you've never seen those episodes, again, like, I've recommended so many episodes of the Diamond and Pearl anime this playthrough, and for good reason. It's just that underrated. Go watch the Byron episodes. They are amazing. And I will do my own portrayal of him based on that. Ah! That's the Orberg's gym badge! I see, I see. You've defeated my son! But that's no surprise! He still has much to learn! In place of my son Rourke, I, Byron, will take your challenge! Uh, he's just, he's so great. He like twirls his shovel above his head. He's so enthusiastic. And you know me, I love enthusiasm. Or excuse me, as Byron would say it, I love enthusiasm! Just like he loves Magneton! Magneton is level 37, electric steel type. Magnet pull for its ability. So if you're a steel type, you are unable to switch out. Really sucks if you have that situation has Flash Cannon, Thunderbolt, Tri-Attack, and Metal Sound. Decent type coverage, but I'm not personally worried. Bodhi can one-shot this. Starting to worry maybe I should have Lepa Buried, but I think we'll be fine. And is he gonna do the thing? Okay, now he's sending out Steelix. <laughs> Man, just, he says that about everything. Just his catchphrase is just, I love whatever, like. <laughs> he'll be like in his gym, like working on his puzzle, and he'll just be like, I love puzzles! <laughs> I love it. It's just 
so great. He's such a joy to watch. Steelix is level 38, steel ground type. Rockhead for its ability, so it cannot flinch. Flash Cannon, uh, cannot flinch, cannot take recoil damage. Flash Cannon, Earthquake, Ice Fang, and Sandstorm. Doesn't really matter what its ability is if that's the case. There's Vacuum Wave not doing much damage at all, but I'm not really sure how much Leaf Blade will do. Maybe I'll try it this turn if I survive this. That Stab Earthquake might hurt even with Steelix's attack stat not really being the best. Yeah, it did. Uh, Crit Leaf Blade, go on, you can do it. That is the plan, that is my master plan. Get critical hits every turn. I think Barry was really onto something. Yeah, I, I think I was right to do Vacuum Wave in that situation. It was one of those cases of it being ambiguous because Vacuum Wave's not really all that strong, but I have a high attack stat and I could have gotten a critical. It was just one of those weird times. Bodhi, I think you can finish off the job with Earthquake. Finish off the job, no, just finish the job. This is my last Earthquake, so we better make this count. Not like it can miss. This is not Gen 1, where 100% accurate moves are not true 100% accurate, even without modifiers. And it is done. Switching. Uh, uh, it would have been good, actually, if I had that Earthquake for this. But we'll run with it. And now for his last Pokemon. It'd be a crime if I didn't say this. It would be an insult to the very character of, Bri of Bri Bri Byron. Here it comes. I love Bastiodon! Bastiodon is level 41, rock steel type. Sturdy for its abilities, no one hit KO moves will work. Um, holding a citrus berry, metal burst, stone edge, iron defense, and taunt. Uh, maybe I should set up with curse here if I don't have any sort of earthquakes. I could have spent this turn doing a Lepa berry, but I think I'll be fine. Besides, Bastiodon is really slow. I'll probably still be faster than it even with this. And it didn't actually get an attack off. Let's go for the wood hammer. I guess we'll never know if I was faster if I one shot it because I got a quick claw. <laughs> Here it comes. I can feel it. It's going to be a lot now. Maybe not quite enough, but still pretty good. And there he gets his citrus berry. Bastiodon's head is so, like, in it sounds odd to say that his head is interesting. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll happily use only attacking moves on you for the rest of this battle. His head is, like, designed like a fortress. For those of you that have played Pokemon Battle Revolution, there's, a like, a castle that looks like Bastiodon's head. That was something that was just begging to happen. I think that's one of the cooler designs of, like, any structure in the Pokemon world. It's just really neat. But that's it. Bodhi was MVP, to say the least. If I had another Earthquake PP, it would have been even easier. Hmm, my sturdy Pokemon defeated. You were strong enough to take down my prize team of Pokemon! In recognition of that power, I give you this! The Mind Badge! I've been waiting for this episode for a long time. I'm sorry if people find Byron kind of annoying though, but hey. Having the Mind Badge enables you to use the hit move strength any time outside of battle! And now you have six gym badges! That means all Pokemon up to level 70 will obey you without question! Here! Take this too! I love TM91 Flash Cannon! Yeah, that's what it contains. If it hits, it might also lower the target's special defense! Gwahaha! The Sinnoh region is vast! Tough trainers like you and Barry crop up constantly to challenge the old guard! With more young trainers like my son and you two taking charge, the future of Pokémon is bright! But I'm not stepping aside just yet! I merely need to rededicate myself to training on Iron Island! Sorry, Byron, I know how much you love your son, but... I got some bad news. Your son's strongest Pokemon is level 12. I know. I know. I'll give you a hug. I love you. <laughs> yeah, Byron is just, he is one of my favorite characters. He's a great example. I don't know how he was in the original Japanese version. I'd assume he was hyperactive because the animation does that. But he's a case where I feel like just having a really batty, enthusiastic character works so much better than if he was just a really gruff, tough guy. Because he's far more memorable this way. I like it a lot. Yeah, we got the Mind Badge Barry. We've caught up to you. I bet you don't have seven badges now, so you can't hold anything over my head. You're tough enough to be considered the Pokemon champ. Well, I don't like to brag, but I do already have a star on my trainer card like most champs have. So good of you to notice. Of course, I'm tougher, so it's not actually gonna happen. Anyway, Emil, come with me to the library. Don't you mean the library? Okay, it had to be said. So, Canalave Library is our next destination. The place that Cynthia told us to go to in the first place is the final location we will be visiting in Canalave City. Once again, I'm not a very good listener. But, with our new mind badge in hand, I really should polish these badges while I'm doing this outro. As you would expect, it is after a gym battle, so the very next thing we'll be doing 
is tackling a feature of multiplayer. And next time on Pokemon Platinum, we'll be doing that as well as heading off to Canalave Library. See you guys then. Maybe by then I'll be done polishing these badges. I hope. <laughs>